Hey there, fellow maker, welcome to the shop. Today, we have a really cool project for you. I can't wait to tell you all about it. Ah! Welcome to the shop, fellow maker. The real Bill is here, and today, we're making something from my favorite universe, Lego. Starting with a Lego sword. This is the classic knight's sword, and we're gonna make it full size. So we're just taking a tiny little hand prop from the Lego world, and we're making it bill-sized. We're also gonna make the shield. I'm very excited. No reason not to just jump straight into it. I've already got my pattern. I have this linked down below for free if you wanna follow along. Let's get to it. Got my pattern ready to go. I fudged the scaling a little bit so that it would fit appropriately in my hand, but also so that I could use some found objects for the handle portion here. So I went to the hardware store and got my hands on some PVC pipe fittings. These are just uh, plastic, but you can see like, that's almost exactly what we need. And that's what I mean by saying I fudged the scale a bit. I made my pattern match the diameter of these pieces a little bit. These fittings are meant to connect a longer section of PVC pipe together, but what I'm gonna do is just cut a small slice and then I can use that to just cinch these two fellows together. Then these parts of the hilt and the pommel will have to be built a different way, but we'll get to that in a second. The back of the shield has its handle, so we'll do pretty much the same thing. It would be the same diameter, it's that classic Lego hand C-shape. So for that, we're just gonna put a couple of these guys together like this, and then the shield front will get attached there. Normally I would use something like this PVC pipe cutter. It just does that, which is awesome. But you can see, not quite big enough for this diameter of pipe. So plenty of other ways we can cut this by hand or with a chop saw. I'm just gonna use my chop saw. I've got my little connector parts here, and you can see that this part actually doesn't need to be that long. I need it just like maybe three-eighths of an inch longer. I may have to trim that a bit. The coupler that's gonna go on there, it needs to be trimmed, so I think I'll cut this in half, put one half on either side, and then cut the whole thing to length once it's assembled. We can stick these together with any kind of glue, probably, but PVC cement is designed for it, so that's what I'm gonna use. Put a little bit of this inside there, and then press that in, like so. The coupler that's gonna go outside of that can get the same treatment. That can get pressed on, and we want that seam to be as flush as possible. Just do the same thing on the other side. <laughs> The bottom, the handle part, is just gonna get a full size coupler. Same thing. Also, this stuff is pretty nasty, vapor-wise. Definitely don't wanna huff that. We obviously have a very well-ventilated area here. But if you're doing this at home, it's probably worth doing outside. All right, the, uh, this coupler is pretty much the exact length we need. And then once this is fully dry, uh, probably in a couple hours, I can trim these to length. I'll do the same thing, or similar, for the little handle on the shield. So we're gonna have the hand part there, and then this back portion protrudes a little bit, so we'll add a little bit there, and then the face of the shield will end up going on there. Ugh. Now, I was always a fan of the, uh, the castle uh, Lego sets. How about you, Brett? What was your favorite? Pirates. Pirates, ahoy, har! <laughs> hey, actually, do you have a favorite Lego set? A good classic one, like Pirates or Castles, one of the other ones? Let us know in the comments. Ah, shield and sword. We're pretty much halfway done, I think. The next step for our handles is to trim a little bit off so that they closer match the dimensions on here. The bottom of this looks pretty good, but uh, the, the ends of the hilt here need to get chopped. And then for our shield, the stem that sticks out the back here, I need to lose a couple inches on that. Uh, and I think I'll just go back to the chop saw for that. The sword hilt looks just about right. The handle for the shield also looks good, but the ends need to get capped. And I also need to cap the end that connects to the face of the shield so that we have something to drill into so we can get a nice strong connection. So here's my thought. I have a circle template and I can figure out how big of a circle I need, which is inch and seven eighths. Then I can cut that out of this sheet of foamed PVC. So this is the same material 
it's all PVC. I can glue it with that same glue to get a really good bond, and then uh, I can glue it in. So, I need to cut some circles. If I had a hole saw that was an inch and seven eighths, I would use that, but I don't. So I'm gonna cut it out with a bandsaw. That sounds right. All of the basic modeling is done on this fella here. I stacked several pieces of PVC in here, so this will be a solid chunk. I'm gonna have to trim that flush, but then the shield will go here and I can put screws right through it. That should make a really strong bond. I'm gonna let these dry. Still have plenty of work to do on that, but we'll do that later. We're gonna shift over here to work on the round parts on the uh, hilt here and the pommel. So these are solid chunks of urethane resin, Smoothcast 300 to be exact. We mixed up a batch of this stuff, put a little bit of black dye in there so that the resin would come out gray, much easier to film. Before the resin fully cured, we put it in the pressure pot so that the resulting resin would have zero bubbles in it, which helps with the turning. Then we bonked it with a hammer and released that solid chunk of plastic from a cup to get this solid piece of resin. This guy is gonna go on the lathe and then we'll turn it down to a round-ish form, hopefully, and be able to install it on our hilt. Now I'll be turning these on the lathe because it's a fairly quick way to get that form. You could 3D print it, you could try and find a found object, but I happen to have all the materials in the lathe on hand. And I think it's probably the quickest way to do it. I do need to find the center of this, so I've got this handy center finder here. I'll draw one line and we'll turn it about 90 degrees, draw another line, and that's our center. And then this is part of the lathe. This is so that we can hold it to the lathe. This doesn't need to be perfectly centered, but it does help. Just like that. So we'll just drill these a little deeper. And this goes on there. All right, this can go get attached to the lathe. I got my lathe out. This is a cheapest lathe money can buy. It's a woodworking lathe. Got my, let's call it a buck, ready to go. That gets screwed on here, like so. Make sure that it's nice and snug. And then I'll turn this on and it'll spin. But I also got some other stuff. I have my handle because I need to carve a stem that'll fit into this hole. So I also have my calipers so that I can both measure the inside of this and the outside of that so they can fit together. Also, I made a template of the shape I'm going for and I can check my work as I go to make sure that I'm getting it right. I have my chisel and all my stuff set up and I'm ready to go. Let's start turning. The turning is done. You can see there are two different ones, the pommel down here and the hilt guys up there. Not a perfect sphere that's kind of tricky to do. I don't often get a lot of chance to practice with the lathe, but I think it's good enough. If you're turning urethane, pressure cast urethane like this, it is a dream 
to work with. And it cuts so nice and smooth. Then I was able to do some sanding right on the uh, lathe while it's spinning to get it down to about a two or 400 grit. Everything on this sword will get sanded and primed later, but we got this to a really good uh, point. Those will eventually get glued into our handle parts like so. But I have a couple more things that I want to uh, do to the PVC pipes before we do some assembly, also before we do the blade. And that is, this text has to go away, this bump has to go away, and these seams need to get filled in. I think I will start by removing these logos and then sanding the whole surface. To remove the bulk of this extra plastic here, I'm using a hand file. You could use your rotary tool or like a belt sander, but I find that it's very common and easy to overdo it and leave a divot there. So I'm just gonna take my time and sand these almost completely down flush and then I'll go over everything with some sandpaper. I'm trying to follow the contour of the round pipe. I don't wanna leave a flat spot anywhere if I can help it. I was able to take care of the major imperfections with the file but now I've got to go in with some sandpaper and clean off the file marks. There's also some like seam lines from the mold uh, when this was made. Try and knock all those back. Basically, I'm just taking 100 grit sandpaper and making everything not shiny anymore. This will also help because we're gonna do some filling to take care of these gaps. We want the filler to have a little something to grab onto. So 100 grit over everything. Got everything sanded down here nicely. Uh, we will sand it more later, oh don't you worry. But for now we need to fill in these little seams. I'm gonna use some body filler, but before I do that, I'm gonna use this triangular shaped file to just kind of open that groove a tiny bit to both give the filler a little room so that there's a little more mass of filler there, but it'll also scratch up that seam so that hopefully the filler will grab on better. Um, I don't wanna put a tiny bit of Bondo in there and just have it pop right out once it cures. So I'm gonna do a little bit of this and then we'll go get our filler and fill it in. So the body filler we're using is Evercoat, very similar to Bondo, I just like it better. It's got the resin and then there's a hardener that you mix in. So I don't need a lot, that's probably way more than I need. And then uh, it says how much you should use on here. I'm just gonna eyeball it. If you put in too much, it'll just cure really fast. That should do it. I'm gonna mix this up and then use an X-Acto to smear it on the surface there. Uh, also, this stuff is polyester, it's kinda nasty. So I'm gonna put on my respirator. All of our filler has fully cured. I even added a little bit of this spot putty on the ends. There were just some tiny seams there. It's just an air drying spot putty. Very similar, but better for smaller gaps. Uh, but now I've got my 100 grit sandpaper and I have to do, you guessed it, some more sanding. Uh, this is gonna kick up a lot of dust. So I'm thinking I'll grab a vacuum to suck it away from me while I work. But at some point I wanna build a downdraft table, which would be like a big perforated board like you'd see on the, the bed of a, uh, a vacuum form table with suction so that I can sand over it and all the dust will get pulled away. I don't have that yet, so I'm just gonna have to make do. Uh, and I should probably also wear a dust mask. Our handles are really shaping up. We made a lot of dust. Next, I think I wanna set these aside and work on the other parts. So for our sword, we need the blade, and for the shield, we'll need the face of it. Let's start with the blade, and to make it, I got some wood. It's a big old piece of poplar here, and I can trace the blade on it and cut out the shape of it, and then we can bevel it. I'll include an additional length on the back to use as the tang. We'll have to cut a slot in here to fit it in, and then figure out how we're gonna anchor it. That's for later Bill to figure out. Uh, so first, let's trace this thing and get to cutting it out. Kind of about like that. All right, that's definitely bigger than it should be, but that's okay. Uh, I can go take this over to the bandsaw and get it cut out. Hey, while I'm working on that, I'd like to tell you a little bit about what's going on at PunishProps.com. 
Especially if you're new to prop and costume making, we have a page just for you. It has links to things like a free ebook on the basics of prop making and a bunch of other wonderful resources. While you're over there, you can check out things like our Patreon campaign if you want to help us out or get yourself something nice over at our store. Once again, that's punishprops.com for all of your prop and costume making needs. Thanks so much, and let's get back to the build. Our cricket bat is ready to go. I need to put a bevel on the sword so there's an edge here that tapers up to the spine in the middle there. Gonna have to remove a lot of wood to do that. This is where the handle's gonna be, so the bevel only really needs to go this far. Then I can go and find the halfway point roughly on here and mark that, and then figure out a clever way to remove a lot of material. So this part here will be buried in the hilt, so it does not need a bevel. I got my bear saw. Uh, I'm gonna cut down to create a flat surface on that part before I make bevels on the rest of the sword. Just gonna be carefully cutting up to the top line of the bevel. And down here, cut to the bottom line, just shy of the line. Till I have a nice, even cut all the way down. Just like that, and I'll do that on all four bevels. I have to remove a lot of material for the bevels, and instead of just grinding it all into dust on the belt sander, which would work, I'm gonna try and use this saw to remove the bulk of the material before going to the sander. Um, this would eventually work, but uh, it's taken a while and the blade's wandering a little bit, so I'm gonna go set up the band saw and do it over there. Got our very rough bevels cut in here. Over here, this is where I did my handsaw work, and there's a pretty big dent there. I may have to fill that in with Bondo later. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Over here, because the bed on the bandsaw only tilts one way, I couldn't cut to that line, so I'm just gonna have to go in with the handsaw and cut that last little bit. This surface clearly needs quite a lot more work, and uh, I don't have a lot of specific woodworking tools, but I do own one block plane. Introducing the noisy cricket of block planes. The uh, tiny block plane did its best, but it's time to bring in the big guns. Got my belt sander. Now that I've got the bevel pretty well established, I just got a sanding block with some 100 grit on here, and I'm gonna start now kind of getting everything down to almost the final shape. I wanna establish this nice line up here, and then the, the edge right here. This doesn't have to be razor thin, we're not actually gonna cut stuff with it, uh, but I do wanna make sure it's a nice consistent thickness. Can also establish these shoulders, this nice shoulder right there too. We're just about there before we can move on to the next step, but there's a pretty good gouge right here. Again, totally my fault. I'm gonna use just a little bit of body filler like we use on the PVC pipes to fill that in and then we'll sand that smooth. Now, you may be wondering why I used poplar or a wood instead of something like MDF for this sword blade. A longer, thinner piece of MDF like this would be fairly brittle, it might actually snap. And the wood grain, while we are kind of fighting it, while we try and manipulate the wood, does make this quite a bit stronger than something like MDF, so that's why. And Poplar is relatively cheap and available at hardware stores around here, so I got this little piece for about five bucks. Actually, I bought two just in case I totally goofed this one up. It's gonna work okay, I think. Just takes a little bit of extra work to manipulate a piece of wood like this. There we go, let's let that cure. While my filler is curing, that gives us a great opportunity to work on the next part of the shield, the face of the shield. This is my 
template that I printed out at the correct scale. The handle will go on the back right there. And then most of this is just gonna be made out of MDF. Uh, I'm using MDF for this because it is uh, fairly cheap and easy to work with. The poplar worked well for this blade, but a big sheet of poplar like this would be a little bit, actually I don't even know if you can get any. So yeah, we're doing MDF. It's not gonna be a long piece that might snap, so I think we're gonna be okay. First thing I need to do is rough cut, not one, but two pieces, and then we can stick them together and cut them out. That's gonna probably have to be the jigsaw to cut that, that out. Uh, these two sheets are gonna get taped together with double stick tape so that I can cut them out together. The shield has been trimmed, sanded the edges nice and smooth. Now I can take them apart. This double-sided tape does not mess around. So these will eventually get glued back together like that, but I need my handle to stick on there. So I'm gonna put screws through this into the handle and then I'll put the other layer on there and cover the screw holes. That's the plan anyway, we'll see how it goes. So I first need to figure out where that needs to go. And I have my template, which I folded in half so I can get the line down the middle. And then I need to figure out where along this line that goes. And I have my tiny shield right here. It's definitely higher than halfway. So uh, around there looks pretty good. So next I need to figure out where all my screw holes are gonna go into this fella here. There, now I know which faces are meant to get glued together. That way the edges will line up perfectly. That is where the handle's gonna go. And remember I put a bunch of PVC in here using PVC cement. So this is essentially a huge chunk of PVC and that's what I'm gonna glue into, or screw into, I'll glue it too. All right, we're gonna do six screws, that should be plenty. Okay, those look good. Um, so I need to countersink these on the other side so that the screw heads will be flush. So I'm gonna do that carefully. I don't wanna go all the way through because that would make this a lot less useful. I'm uh, getting everything as centered as possible and I'm marking the, the center line on the tube so that when I do my glue up in a moment, I can quickly reference that. For the glue up, I have this uh, Crazy Pants uh, Super Instant Epoxy that uh, cures in about four seconds. Yeah, it's closer to three minutes, but cures quite fast. Make sure I mix it together really well. This is gonna go on before I drill the screws from the other side. Uh, I'm also gonna use super glue. So this is gonna be a multi-step process. But the idea is I need to be able to hold this piece in place well enough to be able to do the screws, but this would be very difficult to clamp. I don't think I have a clamp big enough to hold it in place, so we're gonna do it this way. This is all gonna go in the center, and this is a very strong epoxy, but its only job is to hold it in place long enough for me to drill those screws. So I'm gonna put it just in the middle. Now this takes a couple minutes to cure, so to help it, I'm gonna put super glue around the outside, like that. Now, thanks to my lines, I can line this up quickly and accurately. Check that everything is straight. I can use my super glue activator to kick off that super glue, and now that should hold the epoxy while it cures. Doesn't wanna fall over, so that's good. I'm gonna put some one, two, three blocks on there just to hold it in place. There we go. I'm gonna set that aside for 10 minutes, and then I'll come in and add the screws. Our uh, filler here is fully cured, so I need to knock that back. To take away the bulk of the material, I have this really beefy file made out of saw blades, bandsaw blades, so I can use that to carve away most of it, and then I'll come in with sandpaper for the finer detail work. Now, 
Next step on the sword here is to cut a, a rectangular hole in this so that this can slide in there. So this is the, the center line. There's a seam on this. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Well, it sure, sure looks like a rectangle. And it looks like it's about the right size. Time to get to cutting. Got my rotary tool with a cut off buzz saw in it. We'll use that to carefully make our, uh, our rectangle. I couldn't get that round bit to go all the way to the corner so I have a little hand saw to finish the job. I drilled a hole in there so that I can start in the middle here and cut all the way to the corner. That should do it. Just about. There we go. Obviously I'll have to clean that up and fit it a little bit, but that is a good start. So I'm using the file to widen this a little bit. It doesn't quite fit yet. That's okay, we want a snug fit. So I'm just gonna use this to both clean up my cuts and also make a little more room. The slot is wide enough for our wood to fit in there. It is still snug, which is great, but now it won't go down through this part because the tang is a little wide. Ugh. So I need to round this to match the inside of this tube. So that's the profile I want and it needs to come all the way up to like here. So I can take this over to the belt sander and remove all that material. That should do it. I've had to go back and forth a couple times, but I'm very confident it's totally gonna fit. Like that, it, it, and I want it to be snug. Like I said, it's definitely snug. Perfect! <laughs> that is awesome. So that's really sturdy like that. Um, I will glue it, but uh, yeah, that's right in there. That's awesome. Ha! <laughs> It's wonderful. Now I've checked and double checked that the blade is straight when it's assembled. And I, I've practiced a couple of times so that I know exactly how it's supposed to go together. I even made a little mark on there so I know which side goes which way. So I'm mixing up my epoxy here. Got uh, an acid brush so I can slather some of this in the handle there. I sanded the inside of the handle too, just with some 100 grit sandpaper to make sure that it's got a little tooth, a little something to grab onto. Now this is gonna be snug enough. I don't need to clamp it or anything. I can just mash it in there and it'll hold itself in place. And uh, I'm also gonna brush a little bit along here so that hopefully it gets dragged down into the joint. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm also going to put some in that indent there. Eventually that'll get filled, but uh, for now I just wanna get some glue in there. It should help with the glue up. Oh, no, you're not gonna be part of the prop. The sword's curing and I think we're ready to go on the handle on our shield and I can tell because our epoxy popsicle stick is all cured. It should be strong enough to hold this half up by itself and it sure is. I had to put some tape on here so that the glue squeeze out didn't get everywhere. Uh, but I'm gonna drill those holes now and then pop some screws in there and then it should be plenty strong. That's exactly what we want. It is below the surface, which is great. This is like putting the tires on an F1 car. Go, go, go! Time! <laughs> Perfect. The two halves of these are gonna get glued together with copious amounts of wood glue. Okay. It is go time! Now these should line up because I sanded them and they were taped together. Um, I'm gonna need a lot more weight than that. These are just beer bottles full of sand. You know, pretty normal thing to have just lying around. Okay, I changed my mind. I ne this needs to be clamped. So I got these uh, binder clips. I put it up on a piece of wood, so it's off the table. These should hold the edge together nicely. There you go. All right, and then add some more weights just for good measure. Okay, I think I'm gonna let that dry overnight. Today is a new day, everything is dry and it's time to take the clamps off. Boop, ta-da, it's a shield. 
a nice clean face here. This is almost ready for finishing. Just gonna need to do some sanding, maybe a little bit of sealing on these cut edges. That's looking really good. Let's go over to the sword and see how that's doing. So here's the sword. This also got to sit overnight. So the uh, epoxy we put in there is nice and cured. It's feeling really strong. Now when I originally designed this, I actually lengthened the handle a bit because I thought I would need more for my hand to fit at this scale. But it looks like I could actually take off, let's see, about three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna truncate this a little bit just so it matches the tiny sword proportions a little better. Let's go to the bandsaw. Ooh, nice and snug. Yeah, I think that's a good size. It fits just fine in my hand. That'll work. I'm still gonna wait to put these pieces on permanently because we have a little more work to do. This, obviously, all this brush over epoxy needs to get sanded. And then these indents here, I'll fill them with more of our filler. I wonder if that'll come off with a knife. Let me see here. Oh yeah, look at that. I can just peel this off, this top surface here. Save myself a little bit of sanding which goes to show that this epoxy does not actually bond really well to the, uh, the PVC. So that's good to know. I'm not too concerned about this part coming off or any of the epoxy in there. It's really snug, so that, that should be fine. Just gonna trim some of this away before I start sanding. Save myself a little bit of elbow grease. Sorry. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> 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 While the filler is curing on the sword, I'm gonna clean up the edges on this. Now these were perfectly lined up, but when we did our glue up, they didn't get aligned exactly the way I want them to. So I've just got a sanding block here and I'm just gonna sand the edges until they're nice and flush. So that it looks like this is one piece, where before it was two pieces. I gotta jump back to the sword for a moment. The uh, filler here is still pliable, but it's started to cure, which means I can take the sword and very carefully trim away some of the extra filler. I wanna be careful not to carve away too much, but this will avoid some sanding. And I've already done plenty of sanding. You can see, whoa, it's kind of floppy. Like that's the state it's in. Once it's fully cured, this will be totally solid. But right now, we have an opportunity to save ourselves a little bit of work. Boop. Can I get it all to come off in one piece? Nope. <laughs> or yes. So satisfying. All right, now I'll let this fully cure and then I'll sand it in a little bit. The edges are looking nice and flush. Uh, may even give it a little bit of a round over. Now, MDF, the surface is nice and smooth and it should take primer really well, but the edges tend to get a little fuzzy. So to prevent that, I'm gonna seal the entire edge with super glue. This will actually soak in and then we're gonna spray it with our activator so it gets solid. And then there will be this nice solid outer layer that we can sand nice and smooth and it'll take primer really well. So I put a bunch on there and I try and overlap around that rounded edge a little bit. We don't need all of it so we can just kind of brush it and it'll soak right in there and then I can spray it with my activator to fully cure it. In just a little bit, that'll be nice and solid and when we sand it, it'll be nice and smooth. Something else to point out is it, you can actually develop a sensitivity to super glue. So you don't wanna stand over this thing and huff it because uh, it'll make your eyes water and eventually you could develop a sensitivity to it and not be able to use it or be near it at all. So if you're smelling the super glue while you're doing this, then you should consider turning on a fan or uh, wearing a respirator or doing that work outside. But right now, the way I am right now, I can't even smell it. So I think I'm doing okay. Now that my entire edge has been sealed with super glue, I've got some 220 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna knock this down until it's nice and smooth. Now I don't wanna sand all the way through that outer layer. If I do, I'll put a little more super glue on it. So now I'm just gonna go over the whole thing and do even more sanding. And after that, I'm thinking about doing some more sanding. I got everything sanded down to 220 grit. I think that's good for now and it's time to prime it. I'm gonna set this aside 
we'll get a little more work done on the sword. Our filler is nice and uh, cured, so I can remove this masking here. Just a little more sanding. <laughs> I've got to clean all this up so that it all looks nice and flush. We are nearing completion of all the, the modeling work on here with one little detail. I want to put a bevel uh, around this outer part there so it tapers a little bit in towards our, uh, our knob here. So I'm just going to use my rotary tool to get the bulk of the material removed and then I'll clean it up. Now is the point of no return. It's time to glue these pieces in and I have more of my super instant epoxy. So I'm gonna mix that together. So I'm just gonna mix up some epoxy and apply it to the handle and then install the pieces. So I'm gonna have to take that for sure. Oh yeah, there we go, it's seated nicely. <laughs> Look at it! It's so adorable. <laughs> okay, I need to let this dry. I'm gonna sand a little bit of this filler. Then I think we can prime everything. This piece is glued in place, but there's a little bit of a gap between that and the PVC pipe, so I'm just throwing some spot putty in there to fill that, and then we can sand it flush. I got everything sanded down to a 220 grit sandpaper and now it's time to get our sword and shield all primed. That'll show us anywhere that we might need some extra work and it should help fill in some of the smaller scratches. Then we can sand everything a couple more times and then we can paint it. All right, let's go prime. That's just prime. The primer on our shield is dry, and now I can do a little more sanding. Now this guy uh, looks really good. I don't think I have to like sand it all the way down to get any imperfections out. I just need to make it smooth again. So for that, I have a scouring pad. I'm gonna go over everything just to knock back any texture that's left. So this should do it. I'll give this a once over, and we'll see if it's good enough to start painting it. These edges that we sealed with the super glue look really nice. I'm glad I put that extra bit of effort in there. Pop. The primer actually looks good uh, as far as a, like a base coat, but it is a little dark compared to the real one. So I mixed up some gray acrylic paint in my airbrush. I'm just gonna cover everything. The paint's drying on my shield, so I wanna get a head start on the lion pattern, this guy right here. We'll do the uh, red and, and white panels as well, but I need a stencil, so I figure why not just use this pattern, I can cut this out. Use that as our stencil when we spray the gold paint for the lion on there. Now, we're planning on, let's see, I got a paint pen to outline this afterwards, so if this stencil isn't perfect, that's okay, we'll fix and hide our crimes later. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna spend the next millennia cutting out this giant stencil. Next step of color on our shield is gonna be the white pattern on there. So I need to mask off the edge, this lighter gray I wanna keep. So I got some masking tape. I also laid down a towel so that I don't bang up the paint job on anything. Got a nice clean work surface. And I'm gonna put more masking tape on here than I need. And I'll come in and measure the, the edge around it there and trim it by hand. Like that. And we're gonna go all the way around the edge. To draw the edge that we're gonna trim, I took my compass and I extended the poking bit down so it'll hang beyond the edge. And then I set the width to what I wanted. And now I can just trace it around the edge and get a perfect outline offset from the edge of my shield. And go all the way around like that. 
Look at that, it's effortless. Got a nice sharp blade here and I'm taking my time to follow that line exactly. It's okay that it's cutting into the surface of the wood a little bit. That will be the edge of the paint. So you won't notice if there's a little scratch there. Now I can peel away the inside. You'll also notice that the shield is nice and sturdy because my brilliant wife, Brittany, decided to get a bucket. <laughs> Thanks, Britt. You're the best. Around. You're the best. Around. Time for the white. Got some Tamiya here, my airbrush, and I just cover everything. The primer is mostly dry and time to get a little work done on this guy. I think for the urethane parts here and the PVC pipe, I can just scuff it up with this scouring pad and that should look pretty good. But the blade was wood, or still is wood. You can see the wood grain in it, you can still see some scratches. So I'm gonna have to sand that down a little bit. I'm gonna start with 220, see if I can get it as smooth as possible. More sanding, woo! <laughs> So it's not perfect. There's still a little bit of wood grain popping through here, but it is definitely a lot better. So I'm gonna keep going on this. You could spend hours more getting this to a mirror finish, but I'm okay with that. All right, let's do more sanding. I could prime this again. I could prime and sand it for days if I wanted to, uh, but I should probably lay down primer before I put my color on, but. I think it'll be okay. <laughs> I'm gonna use these little uh, painter's pyramids to hold it up off of the table while I paint it. These are also great because you can set your piece down on them and it's only touching on just the tip there, which is super handy. That means you can paint one side, flip it over, and it may mess up a tiny little bit, but only that. These guys even lock together like that so they won't slide apart. And that's how I'm going to set my sword down. This is the Tamiya Gunmetal, and I think it's the closest I can get to the little toy I have. Ah! Um, all right, <laughs> it's dry enough that I can touch it, so I'm gonna carefully flip it over and set it back down on our little pyramids, and then I can paint the other side. The white seems to be dry, so I'm gonna put down some masking tape so that we can spray on the red. So I'm gonna put masking tape down so that the seam is in the middle, but the tape is on the right. Got one big piece here that's gonna go from the middle there to the middle. There we go, that's better. Now it's gonna flip flop halfway. This will go across. Okay, so this quadrant is correct, but we need to make the opposite on this side. So, okay, I think I haven't figured out. I'm gonna trim this piece here. I'm gonna use a ruler so I do it nice and clean like. This piece is gonna get moved up like that. So far, so good. Uh, and then this piece, trim that carefully. Now that can come over. There we go. So now this and this can get painted red. Everything else can get covered. More Tamiya paint going with the red. Let's do this. Now we can hopefully demask everything. Oh, <laughs> a very clean line. Uh, pretty clean line. So a little bit snuck through there, but there's probably gonna be a line on top of that. <laughs> Hashtag oddly satisfying. All right, not perfect, but that's pretty good. I feel like I keep saying that about these, this project. It's not perfect, it's pretty good. Yeah, let's do the, uh, the edge now. And I'm not talking about the member from U2. It only works if you make the sound effect.
Mm. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> All right, I better let that dry. I'm so excited. Mm. Last thing we have to do is the, uh, not a dragon, lion. And uh, I should probably let this dry a little bit before we jump into that. Whew, yeah. Hmm. Mm. Oh, hi there. I didn't see you. <laughs> it is, of course, another day. I let this dry overnight because we're gonna put our stencil on there. So this is the stencil I cut out. My sweet looking lion. Uh, it's gonna go on there, but I need to stick it down. I especially don't want like this little part flopping away. Gonna flip it over, over here. And I have this stuff. It's uh, like a spray adhesive, but it's just meant to be tacky. Just be meant to make this like the back of a post-it note. So I'm gonna spray all this. Actually, I'm gonna read the directions and make sure I let it dry for the appropriate amount of time, and then we'll stick it down. I did read the instructions. It said to shake the can for two whole minutes. I shook it for about 60 seconds. Not even, maybe 30. <laughs> so if this all goes sideways, it's because I didn't shake the can enough but I'm a rebel. I'm really just focusing on the edge. I don't really need the outside to be tacky. I just need the edge to be sticking down. All right, that should do it. I gotta let it dry for a minute or two and then we'll stick it down. It is tacky, that's what we want. So now I need to carefully lay this down, try and get everything lined up and and just gently tap it down. And again, we're gonna outline the uh, edge with a, a, a black line. So if there's a little bit of overspray, not the end of the world, everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> Can you tell we're on day four of this project? <laughs> gonna load up some gold Tamiya. I think I'm gonna use this stuff right here and uh, paint our lion. Time for the exciting bit. We get to peel off our masking. Oh, I'm gonna have to come back and get that, and that, and that. It's okay. Everything's going according to plan. Oh, oh watch this right here. Oh, <laughs> it left the part. Not as satisfying as I hoped. Ooh, that's nice. That tacky spray worked really well. Um, there's only a couple spots where I see a little bit of overspray. Oop, you get out of there. There's that. Okay, that's what we have, and that's the goal. We're pretty close, but we have to do our outlines, and that's why I got this black paint marker. So now I get to flex my drawing skills, well, tracing skills, and outline this whole thing. So this is a paint marker. This is a water-based paint marker. Should dry fairly quickly. You can see a spot here, there's a little bit of overspray. So when I do my outline, which is gonna be fairly thick, I can uh, kind of fix that a little bit. So I'm doing more than just tracing the outline. I'm kind of widening it a little bit. And I can decide to go into the gold if I want or into the red to give myself a little more room. You can also see one of our cat's hairs. And even though our cats don't uh, come to the shop, their hairs do somehow. <laughs> Let it be known too that I'm, I'm not perfect. It's really hard to make stuff that's, we're not gonna weather this. <laughs> so I touched that with my pinky while I was drawing it. I tried to wipe it off, but it's just kind of like that now. I could go in with the red and the airbrush to fix that up, but I'm worried I would do more harm than good. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm paying special attention to not drag my hand across the, the lines I just drew. Uh, but I think I could do the eye now. It's just like, mm -hmm. kind of like that, right like that. Hey, it looks okay. Might go in and touch it up a little bit, or I might just leave it alone because I haven't totally ruined it. <laughs> it's time for the final step. 
clear coat, and we're doing something special on this one. This is a 2K uh, clear satin. What a nice satin finish on here. This is an automotive catalyzed clear paint. So you take this red thing off, you use it to pop this thing in the bottom. That puts a hardener into the liquid in here and creates a chemical reaction that will make it cure really solid, the same kind of finish you have on your car. It's fairly toxic, so I have my respirator here. When I'm spraying, I'll open this giant door next to me so we have nice airflow. We also have a fan going. If you're gonna use this at home, you don't have a big garage, I recommend doing it outside. I also have a tack cloth here so I can clean off all the surfaces of my props before I spray this down so it's nice and perfect. I'm going to put on, I think, three coats of this stuff. I had to modify the props a little bit so that I could paint the front and back at the same time. That meant I drilled a hole in the bottom of this, but you'll never see it. It's also probably a good way to display the shield later on. And then I drilled a tiny hole through the pommel of the sword there so I could hang it. Again, that's so I can spray both sides at the same time. So three coats, about 10 minutes in between each one of them, then we let the thing cure. Let's do it. That's it. <laughs> Two good layers. Two. Yeah. This was a ton of fun. <laughs> I love this so much. Ta-da, ta-da. This makes the uh, seven-year-old Bill so happy that <laughs> I got to make something like this. And I love it. Mm! Uh, I tell you what, this was challenging. This is clean. There's no weathering on it. There's no room to hide your crimes. So anywhere there might be a little bit of an oopsie, you either have to clean it or uh, live with it. There are a couple of spots on here where I definitely am living with some minor flaws, but I'm okay with that. The finish that I put on here, this catalyzed finish, is amazing. It is extremely durable and uh, it great, gives a great, great shine. This satin finish on here looks awesome. I'm definitely gonna use that stuff again in the future. It's a little spendy. I think it was like 20 bucks for the can, but I sealed two props uh, and they're gonna be like this pretty much forever. Thank you so much for checking out the video, joining us. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. We have prop and costume making videos coming out every single week. Thank you so much to our wonderful patrons for helping us afford this fantastic shop space so that we can do these kinds of ridiculous projects. <laughs> if you wanna jump in on the fun, get access to uh, behind the scenes videos, extra credit videos for all of our builds, including this one, and early access to our builds, head on over to patreon.com slash punish props. I thank you for the support. That'll do it for this one. All the tools and materials that I use, those are linked down below. And uh, yeah, challenge yourself to go make something like this. This was really fun and satisfying. If you do a project like this or any prop and costume project really, send me a tweet. I'm Chimbeard over on Twitter. That'll do it for this ridiculous build. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya. Ah! <laughs> I'm always so elegant at putting the, oh, that actually touched my eyeball. Ah! As I was saying, I'm really smooth about putting this on. Uh, Lip. Oop. Yep. This is why we don't have loose articles of clothing around spinning tools. No prop makers were harmed in the filming of this tutorial. Hey, while I'm working on that, uh, <clears throat> we have. I forgot what we sell in our store. What do we sell in this, Bill, what do we sell in the store? Uh, I don't know. <laughs>